Hey guys, so today I'm gonna to be doing the ASW setup tutorial for uh, Project Bands. It's gonna be, a, it's gonna look a lot similar to the Five Horn. So if you have any, if you need to look up, you know, how to set up a room, go back to that video and then come back to this one because this is a little bit different. Uh, it's just the drums and there's a keyboard now that is, is different. The main difference between the ASW and the, and the regular bands is the routing and the cues because the, all the listeners are gonna have their own headphones. So we're gonna be sending out a cue and also the way that you deliver the stems to them. So it's not gonna be a whole rough mix, it's just it's gonna be individual audio files. So for the drums, this is gonna be the miking situation that we're gonna be dealing with. So this is gonna be our kick mic. We have a, a 57 for the snare, and then we have the room mics from the five horn that are gonna go in front of the drum set for as the overheads. And it's gonna be the same deal, so there's no room mics for the ASW. Instead, we're gonna use this for the overheads. So this is about what the drum set should look like when it's set up. Obviously there's no cables yet, but just for the positioning, got a kick mic, snare pointing pretty much toward the center. And then same thing as the rooms, we're doing drummer's perspective. So this is left, this is right. This microphone is right. Because if you're looking at it from this way, the mic's pointing to your left and the left one is pointing to the right because it's XY pattern. So for the motif, what you're gonna be needing is a power cable, obviously, to run into the power. You're gonna need a DI box, one of these IMP2s. You'll need a quarter inch cable and an XLR. So the quarter inch is gonna come out of the output left mono, right here. It's gonna go into the input of this DI. You don't need to worry about an output because we're not running it through any amp. It's the same thing with the bass. For, for ASW, you do not need an an amp because everyone's gonna be wearing headphones anyways, so you don't need to listen to the room because everyone's gonna be listening to what comes out of Pro Tools. And then the XLR is gonna go out of the output into the synth input right here. And that's all you need for that until you start getting the cues ready and start checking levels. I also forgot to mention earlier, but for ASW, we have a vocal mic and that's the SM7B. This is gonna go into tie line 13 for lead vox slash tenor. Another really important thing to note when you're setting up the ASW session is to set up a talk back for Paula, who's the teacher. She needs this to communicate with us since we're all using headphones. And I like to use Tie Line 9. You can use whichever one's available, really. Just make sure that it corresponds in Pro Tools in the input section. So that's 9. Paula talk back is labeled right here. The input is 9. In addition to Paula's talkback, we're going to have our own talkback. And this is kind of specific to the semester that we're in, because usually we would be able to use this Mackie to talk back. But for technical issues, we're just going to be setting up our own. This is going to be plugged in right here into the interface itself because we don't need a tie line. So I like to use 10, whichever one's available, like I said. And this should come in to number 10. And as you can see, it's not feeding back in here because we're not routing it to the speakers in here. We're just routing it to the queue. So if you look over here, it's going in from 10 out into the queue. So they can hear what I'm saying right now, but I cannot. And that's good for uh, listening. So next I want to talk about these little red cue boxes. These are what the players are going to be used to hear themselves. So there can be up to four people, four players listening per box. Each person has one volume knob for the entire mix. So your job as the Pro Tools person is going to be to adjust levels for them after they're all set up. So we're gonna put these on stands and you'll probably need about four. I think there's four that we have in here. So I think you need all four to get everybody their own box or not own box, but own input. So for the cue boxes, what you're gonna need is for as many of the boxes that you have, you're gonna need cables these gray ones that are four pins instead of the xlr three pins and we're going to go out of q1 into the first input of the first box and the cool thing about these boxes is that you can daisy chain them to each other which means you can pass along the signal from one to the other and since they're all getting the same signal they just control the volume individually it doesn't you don't need to patch it back into the wall and it's all very convenient so you just take the out of one from the same cable take the out of one into the input of the next one and you just keep going until you have all the room filled and everyone has their own cues and that should you should be set there everyone has their own headphones obviously this would be for the singer 
So their input would be one. If they want more, they can adjust themselves. And you adjust the mix in the control room, like I said earlier. Okay, so now that we have the live room set up, we're good to start setting up our Pro Tools session. And I'm gonna move over to the mix window just to kind of get an idea of how the routing works in here. So the best way to do that is Command equals. That pulls up this mix window. Oops. Okay, so we have a few things to take note of. First of all, we're, like I said earlier, we're not sending just a mix like in the five band, five horn band. We're sending individual audio stems or audio files that are all colored right here to the students. And so the way we're gonna do that, and the way you're gonna monitor that is, the, the cool thing about that is in here, you don't have to hear things like the click when you're listening. The players will still hear it because they have this individual cue send up here. So let's say the, the drummer needs to hear more kick, or everyone's like, oh, I can't hear the kick. Well, I'll go over here and boost up the kick a little bit in the Q1. That's not gonna affect what you're hearing in here, but they're gonna hear more of the kick. So let's say the vocalist can't hear herself. That's usually the biggest problem is the vocals can't hear themselves. So you could just boost them up like that. If you need a bigger fader, you can just click in here. That'll pull up this one, give you more, more room to, to play with. Another thing that they often want is reverb. So if you want to send reverb to like, let's say the vocal, if she wants to have, or he or she wants to have some vocals, they, you can send it the same way using this fader, you can bring up some reverb and then it should go through their cue and also in here for you. That's the way we have it set up. There's a cue, there's a vocal, or sorry, a reverb going to the cue as well as into the main room. Also for the click, Many times they're gonna need a click, more often than not. So the way to do that, the way to set up a click is you'll go up here, back in the session view, you'll go, let's say they need like 100 BPM, click here, type in your 100, and then you can start recording. So I have it all set up as a group, so just press one of the instruments because they're all grouped together, they all turn on at the same time. These are all of the instruments that are gonna be recorded at the same time, and then, you have the click ready, and I'm gonna show you something that often happens when we're doing ASW. So I'm gonna press record just for now, and we're gonna, we don't hear click right now because, there we go, I had it muted. They would be able to hear it. But let's say there's a part in the song that they want the click to go out. So what you can do is if you press seven on the number pad, it takes the click out. Let's say there's like a slowdown section and they don't wanna hear click. So it takes it out for everybody. And if you press seven again, it turns it back on. So that's a really quick tip. That happens a lot in ASW. I'm gonna stop that. So once we have levels and, and reverb and everything set up the way we want it, we're ready to start recording. And this part is very specific to ASW because throughout the session, we're gonna have different students coming in for their projects. So let's say the first person is Sarah. Let's do Sarah again. So her first take, we're gonna get started. There's probably gonna be a click going on. So I'm gonna have that playing. I'm gonna turn the click off in here, but they're still gonna, oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna mute the click track. If you wanna mute it, don't press seven, but mute it in here because they still get the click in their cue. So it's playing, it's playing the whole song. Let's say this is the whole take. They're done. Let's say they're gonna do two more. So I like to do it. I don't like to make a new playlist for the specific student. I like to just start in a different area because it makes it easier to export. So just make sure you start it on a downbeat so that they don't get confused with the click starting in a specific spot. So I'm starting it on now 10, just anywhere that's not in the original space. I'm gonna start on 10, I'm gonna press three, and then you can take another take. Let's just say that's take two, and you'll do that for as many as you need. What we're gonna do now is similar to what we did in, in Five Horn, but we're gonna take all of these for each take, Command Shift K, Figure out how to do this with one hand. Command Shift K. We're gonna do wave files, interleaved, and then we're gonna make a folder inside of the students folder, right? So I'm gonna choose, this is the test I made. So I'm gonna make inside of our ASW folder, we're gonna make a Sarah folder. And inside Sarah's folder, I'm gonna make a folder for each take that we do. So take one, 
let's say we did just two two takes total. So take one and those, so the ones that I highlighted here that I'm exporting are gonna go into take one and so on for, for all the other ones. So I'm ready to do that. And that way they, they can import all of the take, all of the instruments from the first take into their session. Or maybe if they wanna use the second take, we do the exact same thing. Command Shift K. Choose. We have to go to where we were. Sarah, make another folder, take two. Bear with me, I'm just doing this with one hand. So take two, we go in here, take it to go. And then once the next student comes, that's when I like to do a new playlist. So to do that, control backslash, it creates a new playlist for each, each instrument since they're all grouped. And you just rinse and repeat. I hope all of this made sense. And if you guys have any other questions or concerns or about the setup, about running Pro Tools or anything like that, message me or Hari and we will help you get that figured out. Other than that, I think that's, that's it for ASW.